So what does the Act apply to? Ah, OK. I think that sounds like a simple question, but um, the answer isn't quite as simple as one might imagine. So in the original uh, draft of the bill back in February 2017, the scope was defined by reference to civil proceedings. OK, so for the, the non-lawyers among you, those are any legal proceedings that can be taken in the civil courts as distinct from the criminal courts. Now, there were various representations made to the Department of Justice throughout that said, look, you know, the whole aim of this act is to try to divert cases out of court and out of civil proceedings. So defining the scope of the whole act by reference to civil proceedings is actually contrary to what the act is trying to do in the first place. Um, that was taken on board and that reference to civil proceedings was removed, but not actually replaced with anything else as regards the scope. So when we're looking at what this act applies to, we actually have to look at what it doesn't apply to and then assume it applies to everything else. OK, so it's kind of the scope is defined by reference to what's excluded really more than what's included. Um, and I, I think it might be worth just going through what is excluded to give you an idea of, of what these look like. So excluded from the scope of this act is, first of all, any arbitrations, as defined by reference to the Arbitration Act in Ireland, um, any dispute falling within the remit of the Workplace Relations Commission, and that is the main state body that deals with workplace conflict, um, most disputes relating to taxes and revenue uh, are excluded. So the revenue commissioners won't be obliged to mediate with you about your tax defaults. Um, any cases that are subject to judicial review are excluded, as are cases against the state for infringements of fundamental rights. And then there are various categories of family law proceedings which are excluded. Now, one of these is proceedings under the domestic violence legislation, and it's worth just taking a minute to speak about that um, in a little bit more detail, because what is excluded there are actual applications for barring orders, safety orders and protection orders. So applications that are being made under the domestic violence legislation. It doesn't mean that all family law cases in which there may or may not be a domestic violence element are excluded. So it's important to distinguish between those. Um, also proceedings under the Child Care Acts, which uh, regulate the powers of the state to intervene when children aren't being adequately cared for are excluded. Um, that is a pity actually, because I know from colleagues working in that area, that mediation is actually happening in that space, in that subject matter in relation to public child care law. Um, then the, the government's Department of Justice, if you like, can also um, decide that certain other dis disputes, as may be prescribed, are excluded. So there's a, a power there to designate other disputes as being um, excluded. And of course, so as not to get your laws mixed up, um, any cases to which any other specific mediation laws might apply are excluded. Sounds like a lot of exclusions, but actually when you look at it closely, it still leaves a lot of, media, a lot of cases open to coming within the framework of this piece of legislation.